Okay, so now we're installing the greenhouse plastic on your hoop house. And here's just a few tips from us having to put up quite a bit over the last few years. Uh, as I talked about earlier, visualizing the process itself, uh, you're gonna need more than one person there to do this. And make sure that the process you wanna do, you're conveying that to the people that are helping you. So you guys are not working against each other to, to install this. Uh, a key thing is the time of day. Uh, here in Texas, the wind blows. It's blowing right now. It's, it's middle of the afternoon and you probably got 10 or 12 mile an hour wind. That's not a lot, but when you get a big piece of plastic out there, a giant sail, uh, that becomes an issue. So make sure that whenever you're going to put your plastic on, know your weather conditions. And the earlier in the morning, first light when there's hardly any wind is probably the best time of day to do it. And you're also fresh. I mean, it's, I would hate to do this at the end of the day. Oh, if you're tired, you've been installing the hoop house all day and decide, oh, let's try to put this plastic on. Um, the it, it's not that physical, but it is kind of mental. And yes. that's, that's a big drain. And, and it's expensive. The piece of plastic right. is expensive. I mean, it depending on the size of your house, um, you want to be fresh and you want the people that you're doing this with, you want to be spot on with this. You don't really want to uh, take the chance of damaging your plastic. One thing I'll say is lay out your piece of plastic first. Don't assume the way it's either rolled or folded or how it is in the box. It's going to just come out of there and lay right over the greenhouse. Make sure you have it laid out. You understand which side is up, which side is down. You know, in, in the case of our, our general plastic, it has an anti-condensate that needs to go on the inside. You need to know that the inside is the inside. You don't want to put this all the way over your hoop house and then realize you're looking at it and going, oh, it's on backwards or it's on upside down. We have to take it back off, flip it over, and then redo it. And the reason that's important is that anti-condensate layer on the bottom, so on the inside of the hoop house, a hoop house is a very humid environment. So as it collects water droplets on top, similar to how a glass of tea would or a glass of water would, you don't want that those droplets dropping down on the leaf tissue, especially if you're doing flowers or, or uh, any type of produce where your visualization is very important to the sale. So this anti-condensate basically makes that a little slicker and it, it, it enforces the water to roll down to the sides and into the soil or into the ground on the inside of the hoop house. So it's just from keeping that raining down. And I've been in a hoop house where it has not had that and it, it literally has water droplets. So it's not good for the employees. It's very uncomfortable to work in. It's not good for the plants. So make sure that's on the top. So I, did you say where you just look up and you can read it? Yeah. So Normally, if you're on the outside and you look at it, if you're reading it, it's going to be backwards. If you're on the inside and you look at it where it says inside, it's going to read left or right like you should be able to read it. A lot of folks uh, question about how this thing unfolds. Just know that there's several different folds. There's a C fold, a W fold, and sometimes they're just folded in half. And that, uh, largely that has a little bit due to manufacturer specifications and then uh, a little bit uh, on how wide that this thing actually is. So the largest piece of plastic that we have is 54 foot wide. So that's a W fold, which is folded in on itself and then folded in on itself. Well, a 20 foot or a 16 or 32 may simply be uh, a fold in thirds and it unfolds like you're undoing a C. So you're going to see, and a lot of people worry about this in the beginning that, oh, this thing's been folded, it has lines. After this thing heats up for just a couple of hours, all of those folding lines go away, so you really don't have to worry about that. So just be aware that each piece of plastic is going to unfold just a little bit differently, but the concept is the same. You'll pull the corner and it goes over the top. Just check and make sure what that anti-condensate uh, label is. Most of the time, it's right in the dead center of that. So as you unfold, like Julian said, and kind of you're starting to unfold and prep this thing, you're going to be able to see it uh, fairly easy. Um, one other thing that we didn't write down that I want to say is it's a really good idea to have spring wire laid out all around the perimeter first. That way you're not searching for it. So as a couple of people are doing this, go ahead and put that spring wire up so it's there when you need it. 
Um, let's kind of talk about the number of folks. I've been on an install where there was like a big community effort. I mean, there's like 12 people and, you know, six of them were standing around kind of getting in the way. I've been to one where there's three. It was a smaller house that seemed to work out well. I really like for a hundred foot house to at least have four people. Um, that's, I think my ideal thing would be to have six people on a hundred foot house, uh, especially anything above a 20 foot wide. That way you got four people on the corner, one person that can go around and, and be the, the wiggle wire person. And then another person on the center with my favorite tool to use is an, ex, uh, an extendable paint pole that's made out of aluminum with a one inch PVC non-threaded cap duct tape to the end of the threads. And basically that gives you a big surface area that when it does, and it's not if, it's when that plastic gets caught on the hoop in some way or another going over, that somebody from the inside can gently push that over and it's real slick and real smooth. Uh, my second tip that I would say is to go a foot or so on, on either corner that you're going to drag over the top. And my favorite thing to use is a softball size wiffle ball. It's nice and big. There's a lot of surface area over. You stick that in the corner, you loop a rope around it, and that rope's loop kind of catches the base that you can call that wiffle ball, and you can pull over without exerting a whole lot of force on a very concentrated piece of the plastic. I don't know if that's going to translate well on audio, so we're certainly going to have some pictures of that. But that's going to allow you to both people to really pull that over. Take a look at the rope that you use. Um, you know, webbing is super strong and great. It could be a little uncomfortable on the hands. A very thin rope uh, is certainly going to be uncomfortable. So you may want to go ahead and, and pick up like, I don't know, at least a half inch or a three eighths. Not a three eighths. There's another one. Probably quarter to three eighths. Yeah, I... quarter to three eighths is, is I, I would, the bigger, the better. The bigger, more, more you can afford, not more than half an inch though. Half an inch to me is like the ideal weight because it gives you enough strength and enough uh, kind of grip for your hands to get that over. And you may even have that laying around, but you're basically going to weight that down you know, with a small rock, I mean, it seems, I think I've always just used a small rock for my property. I've wrapped that around, I've thrown it over the house. You know, if it gets caught in the ribs, you can just take it and keep throwing it over until, you know, you're free and clear of the house itself. Two people drag that up and it's going to go right over, especially when you have that person in the middle. Make sure communication, uh, you're talking loud enough to, hey, if you're, if you hit a snag, don't just pull on this because uh, that could cause a tear. So if you, face any resistance whatsoever. Just stop, let the paint pole person go over there and kind of shimmy that around and you're gonna be okay. So over the years, like I said, I've been on many hoop house installs. I've been on a very large commercial property where they had um, a cage that was specifically mounted to a forklift that raised it up and very efficiently put it over. But these people had you know, several dozen hoop houses where this was just part of their daily routines, uh, changing this out. So they had to have something specific. You're not going to have that. So my, my favorite way to do it is I like to go um, not lengthwise, but widthwise. So I'll throw it over and you're only going over the length or yeah, you're only going over the width. And so we're going to, I like to visualize that this whole much larger piece of plastic is going to as perfectly as possible center itself on the hoop. And another thing that we learned on the last one, and especially in regards to that anti-condensate uh, label being right there in the middle, is that's a good indicator of where the top of that plastic needs to be in relationship to the ridge poles, which by and large are going to be right dead center of the top of the hoop house. So as long as that's draped in the center and everything's draped down to the side that you have two to four foot on the sides and two to four foot on the end walls. And that's going to be the indication that you've got plenty of room to work all the way around. One other thing to consider when you're dragging the piece of plastic up is the wind direction. So working against the wind may sound a little counterintuitive, but what that helps happen is you're going to have a little bit of lift and a little bit of loft, which in a high wind situation you don't want, but that little simple breeze kind of helps pillowing or billowing that uh, plastic over that hoop is certainly going to help. I have done it the other way, and this is why I'm so adamant about it, where the wind is pushing against the plastic. Well, what winds up happening is it pushes against the ribs, 
So every time you hit rib, you have this point that you're now having to drag across. Um, it's not really gonna hurt the plastic, but it does present opportunities to get stuck, to get snagged, uh, could have a little bit of tear and pull that over. And I guess, <laughs> were you there when, when Carl said that uh, sometimes he thinks his house host, his poop house is mainly repair tape and less plastic? You're gonna get pinholes, you're gonna get little tears. That It just happens. I mean, no, I don't care how careful you are or how many times you've done it, there's always a little spot that gets a little poked. Uh, have that repair tape ready. Just fix it right then and there when you're on the ladder and be done with it. Um, I remember the last, uh, the most current one that we put up. I mean, I, I put a pipe, I mean, right through it. And it's fixed. We fixed it on the way and it's still holding to this day, no problem. So now that that plastic is completely on the center of the hoop house, Julian's going to talk to you about the order in which we like to tighten these things up. So. The first thing I would do is, is square it up. So again, when you first laid it out, you know which is either a cut end or a factory end. And you can line that factory end up. If you're gonna do a, a two foot or a one foot overlap all the way down one side, you can line that up. And then think about this as putting a screen, a window screen on, on, on a window, okay? You're going to start in one corner and you're going to work your way down one side and get it nice and tight. Then you're going to decide 90 degrees to that. You're going to pull it along that side and make it nice and tight. And then now you can pull over the top of the hoops to the other side and start tightening it all the way down till you get to your other end wall. And then you can pull that last section nice and tight. By doing it this way, you get good tight plastic. And the tighter the plastic is, the better. The more it deflects the wind, the more it deflects rain, snow, and weather. One other thing the pl tight plastic does is as you're working inside this, that reduces the amount of flutter that that plastic is going to have in any type of breeze. And there's nothing worse than working inside of a what should be a very peaceful environment once this thing is up and listening to the of this of this loose greenhouse plastic beating itself in the wind. Now, on the end walls, the straightest piece that you're going to have is going to be the baseboard of the end wall. So if you, if you start in the center of the end wall and work your way out to both sides, get the base nice and tight so you have a good base to start with, then start in the center at the top of the hoop, pull it up to the top, make it nice and tight, and then work your way down both sides of the end wall and tightening it as you go down both sides, putting the spring wire in it you're gonna end up with a nice drum tight end wall when you're done. Yeah, the other good thing point about the end wall is like Julian said, do the base and then you do the hoops. You know, you're pulling out on this thing to keep it uh, to keep it pretty square. And so once that perimeter is done, you got the door, you got the door frames, you got the uprights, you know, you may have some vents up there. Every single one of those that you have a connection point for a piece of lock channel. I'm telling you, I mean, that thing can get really drum tight really quick because every time it goes in and out of that lock channel, that plastic in, in some degrees gets a little tighter. It's taking up a little space. Yeah. It, yeah. So it, it, it pulls itself. It pulls itself. So I personally like to work the door first, the door frame second, and then start working out from there because you've now pulled it into the center as tight as it can go. And now you're working in little segmented parts where you got the perimeter to the door to the upright. And now this other upright just keeps that even tighter. So just something to think about. And uh, that brings us to basically, yeah, one more thing. Yeah, tighten that whole end wall. And then like Nick said, do your door frame, do your door. When it's all still one piece, don't cut it. Because yes. as, soon as, you t as soon as you cut it, you're going to lose that integrity of it being drum tight. Now you're going to have, if you do the door and you've cut the door frame already, now you're gonna to have to stretch and tighten all that. If you just start inserting the lock channel, it's all gonna be nice and tight. And then you can trim out your door. Yeah. So the last point is if you do not have a roll-up side, you know, when you're when you're straightening all that out, it's gonna to go to the base and the hip and you're gonna be done. So the next segment we're gonna talk about is what happens if you have a roll-up side and how to make this little adjustment. And we'll see you in the next segment.